Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. And last week I posted this map interaction clip on my channel. Let's have a look. So this is a Google map interaction where you see a bunch of locations that are tagged below like pizza joints, pharmacies, gyms, ATMs, car wash, etc. And when you click on any one of these location buttons, the map automatically pans to the center, shows you the pin of that location in the center and it does it automatically. So this was the interaction that I built and then I asked a lot of my followers on LinkedIn, Instagram and on the channel to guess how it was done. And I got a lot of answers as well as comments and a lot of them were pretty close actually, but none of them were like exact. Uh, so it involves a lot of tricks and tips. So without further ado, let's see how can you build this interaction in Figma. Pretty cool interaction in Figma actually. And using just one artboard, not many artboards, just one artboard and you will be able to make this. So stay tuned, let's get started with our video. So we are in Figma right now and we need a bunch of things, bunch of UI elements to build the prototype first. So let me just walk you through the elements that we need for this interaction. So first of all, you need a big map, a really large map like this. And how to get this map, I've explained it in my previous old video where I've explained how to build the Google map. So you can check it out. I'll also link it in the description or in the cards above. So you can check it out from there. So you need this large high quality map. The next thing that you need is these pins. So these pins contain uh, the time duration from my location to a particular location. Let's say from my location to a pizza joint is just 15 minutes. So different pins for different type of locations, different locations. Um, this is the same thing actually. I just created one circle, some rectangle, uh, combined them together and added text to it. So I created this five variants out of it. So these are the location pins. The next thing is the search bar. It's just a rectangle search icon and a text. We're not going to animate this anyway, by the way. Um, then you have bottom sheet. So bottom sheet is nothing but a sheet that comes from the bottom and where our locations will be placed. So now this is like a small rectangle has handle, says nearby location and that's it. I've clubbed them together under a frame. So this will be the shell of a bottom sheet. The next thing that we have is buttons. So we'll have all these buttons. One is pizza joint, the other one is pharmacy, third is gym, ATM and car wash. So making this is also really easy. You just have to have a rectangle, some text and some illustration and just group them together. So you will finish the buttons. The next thing is called target actually. And it's nothing but a simple rectangle with a stroke of 16 and a red color. Doesn't matter what color you put but this is what it is. It's 300 size, slightly bigger in size than the pins so that it can accommodate the pin in the center. And it's just a really simple rectangle, nothing more to it, but this creates the most crucial part in our interaction, this small rectangle. Okay. So uh, nothing much. So these are the elements. And then obviously you have our artboard, right? So iPhone 11 Pro Max artboard. Now what we need to do is first, we need to keep all these things inside the artboard. So that becomes the UI part. And after that, the UI is assembled. We will do the prototyping. Okay. So let's start with the map. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select my map and I'm going to drag it into my artboard here. The iPhone 11 Pro Max artboard that we have built and I'm going to center align it. Uh, now, in case you don't want to see the overflowing map, you can always select the artboard and you can always toggle clip content to see what is inside the map and what is out. And I've explained how and what clip content does in my previous videos. So just check it out. Basically, it hides the overflowing content from a frame. So for now, we want to see the map. So I'll just uncheck my clip content option. And here's the map. Now, the second thing we want to do is we want to place these location pins randomly on my map. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the pins and my map together. Okay. And this is my map. Let me select my map. Yeah. So my pins and my maps are selected and now I'm going to hit option command G, which will group them under a frame. So hit option command G and now they are under a frame. I'm just going to drag that frame inside and I'm going to call this frame as map. So this map frame contains both your pins and your bigger map 
now guys uh, just to make sure that when i link these buttons these buttons to the respective pins so i have named the pins according accordingly as well so if you see on the left uh, the pins are uniquely named and this is really important so pin pizza pin atm pin car pin gym and pin hospital so all of them are uniquely named and they're in the same group as the map okay now the next thing what we want to do is we'll select the group that contains the map and we want to change the bounds of that frame so if the blue boundary that you've seen is the bounds of the frame and we want it to be the same as your iphone 11 pro max artboards frame okay that is needed because we want to horizontally and vertically drag the map okay so what i want to do is i'll just select the map hit clip content here and hit command on my keyboard and resize the bounds okay to match the bounds of the artboard so by you have to remember that you have to hit command on your keyboard while resizing otherwise it will scale the components of the content inside we don't want that we just want to change the bounds so so yeah so if i just uncheck clip content for this particular frame you will see everything is still there just that we have hidden it up okay and now what we want to do is we want to go to our prototyping tab we have selected our frame that contains all these pins and map let's go to the prototyping tab and select the over, uh, overflow behavior as horizontal and vertical okay and again guys i've explained all this in my last few videos so just check it out in the channel and let's see how it looks like okay so now this is the map that we have and if you see we are able to move and we are also able to see all the pins okay so our first part is done where we want to build the map and add the dragging interaction to it now the second thing that we want to build is add these elements the search bar and the bottom frame to the uh, artboard so let me quickly do that yeah so guys i'm done with this placing these ui elements on the uh, artboard just make sure that while dragging uh, sometime these elements go inside another frames so make sure that your map only contains the map frame only contains the map and the pins and the bottom sheet uh, let me just rename it to bottom sheet your bottom sheet and your search icon uh, your search bar is out of these groups so they are exclusive they are not inside each other okay so now that is done let me now quickly set up the buttons on the bottom sheet okay so let's quickly do that So guys, I have now placed all the pills, all these buttons in one location and I'm gonna uh, group them under a frame the same way we did um, option command G. Okay. And let me just drag it inside the artboard and I'm gonna call it uh, location buttons. Okay. Perfect. Now, uh, what we need to do is we want them to be horizontally scrollable. So uh, let me just first drag them in the bottom sheet group. Yeah. And we want them to be horizontally scrollable. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the frame that contains all these buttons. And I'm going to again hit command on my keyboard and resize the bounds of this frame. So this is like this. And if I show you clip content, you might be able to see when I do clip content. Okay. Perfect. So uncheck this just for now so that everything is working. Now, if you see, um, the group uh, the frame that contained these buttons have smaller bounds and what we can now do is go to the prototyping tab and hit horizontal scrolling so now it will allow us to do horizontal scrolling in these buttons okay so let's quickly see how it looks like this is our map the map is working fine this is static a search bar if you see this one we are able to scroll perfect so now our ui is done and we have the basic functionalities in place now what we want to do is we want to link these buttons to these pins on the map so let me start the final step for that so guys for the final step what we want to do is we want to place these targets on the map and we need these targets to cover the pins that we have added so these pins so let me first uh, start with it so this uh, if you see is just a simple rectangle as of now and it just contains a stroke to it 16 dp stroke now what we want to do is uh, we want to create a, a component out of it so i'll just create a component just hit the component option and it will become like a component here which is represented by this solid diamonds 
and we want to create five of these because we have five pins right so we'll create five pins out of it and make sure you uniquely name it because we need this for linking the prototype so first one could be the same way we re uh, rename the pins we can rename this as well so target pizza um, we have pizza gym atm right so we'll just start duplicating this create instances and just keep on renaming it so guys now we need to place these target components that we have built these rectangles over their respective pins here in the map so I'll just drag one and show you so something like this on the first one and similarly on the rest of the things. So guys, I have now placed all the target uh, rectangles that we have created on the pins above the pins actually so that the pins are typically in the center of those uh, targets. And if you see all of these are in the same group now. So in the map frame, it contains the target uh, rectangles, the pins and the bigger map. Okay. So I just roughly place them in the center of the so pins in the center and the rectangles are outside okay now these rectangles are needed because we are going to use an interaction called scroll to and that scroll to needs to scroll to some position and if the area is bigger we'll try to keep it in the frame so if you see uh, this bigger area we'll try to make sure that it's in the center of the frame you can also link it to the pins directly but the problem with that is the pin is really small so you have to do a lot of more adjustment to make it in the center while if the area is big it will be able for us to easily center it. So I'll explain it how it's going to work. Um, so we are now going to use scroll to interaction and I've explained scroll to in details on my last few videos in uh, Figma shorts. So go to my channel, check out the Figma shorts playlist and there I've explained all the scroll to interaction. Uh, we are going to use a very special one. The last one in that video I've explained, which is the diagonal one in which you can move in X and Y both directions. So we're going to take the advantage of that. Okay. And so for all those purposes, you need to have these things and you also need to have uh, these target areas as your components. So if you just normally group them, it will not work. Make sure that you have made component out of everything. Okay. So now what we want to do is we will do one thing. So first we'll select the pizza joint. Okay. And I have named it accordingly. So I explained in uh, just before that uh, all the pins have like synonym uh, pins and targets so target pizza and you also have pin pizza okay so you have pins and targets named in the same way so that i know which one to link so what i want to do is now i'll select my first button which is pizza joint and i on the click of it i want it to take to this location let's say so i'm good i'll go to my prototyping tab and i'll just drag the pin don't worry don't need to touch it anywhere simply come here on click scroll to and here you will see all the elements that you have already built, all the components that you built. You can select anyone from here. So we want the first one to go to target pizza, the rectangle that is named as target pizza. So pizza will be linked into pizza. Perfect. Instead of instant, we want animate 300 millisecond, maybe a little bit more we can give uh, around, let's say 450, right? And ease So now let's see how it looks like. Um, so my map is here. It's working now. Let's say we hit pizza joint So it's panning the map, but uh, it's sticking in the top left corner So now we need to do a little bit of cleanup where we need to set up X and Y offsets now again How these X and Y offsets work in scroll to animation? I have explained in my figma shorts video in very detail so go and check it out but what does that means is that we need to give some X and Y offset so that it moves in the center Okay so right now, if you see the interaction, we have zero X and zero Y offsets. So let's give some X and Y offsets. So in the Y direction, we want it to be down. So it should be minus. So let's say we give minus 150. So that comes a little bit in the center. And for X, again, we want it to be a little bit uh, in the center. So again, minus 50 will give because it's uh, almost there in, in the center, right? So X coordinate minus 50, Y coordinates minus 150, okay? And you have to fine tune it according to your prototype. It's, there's no fix set of it. This is based on my prototype. So just fix it out and see which one is working for you. And yeah, now let's quickly see how it's working. So I just move it here. Let me click on pizza joint. Wow, perfect. So now it's coming in the center. 
So now what we need to do is we need to replicate the same interaction for all of these pills and same X and Y offsets. So let me quickly do that. So guys, now what we have done is we have linked all the pills to the respective targets and given the same minus 150 X or oh, sorry, Y out offset and minus 50 as X offset. Now, now let's quickly see how it's working. So I'll refresh it one more time. I'll scroll it. And if I click center, 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 and again, center. So perfect. Now everything is moving in the center. Now everything is panning properly in the center. Now the last step that we need to do is we need to select all of these target areas that we have created, these components, the red components, and we need to give them a zero parcel because obviously we don't want to see them in the map. So we'll just give them a zero parcel. They are there, but they are not visible. Now let's quickly see how it looks like. Perfect. So guys, this is working absolutely fine. And this is it actually, I think uh, there's nothing more to do to it. So guys, this is the today's video. And I think you can use the same interaction, same principle to build uh, interaction for uh, Uber and Lyft as well, where you see those two search and destination uh, fields and you click on them, the map automatically pans to that location on the map below. So how about we do a challenge? You guys take this video as a principle and build a Uber prototype where you select destination and uh, pickup. And when you click on those two fields, it just automatically pans the map. So do that and tag me on my socials and I'll give you a shout out in my next video. And yeah, guys, I'll see you in my next video. So take care. Bye-bye.